In the 2016 uh, UNEP emissions gap report, we're very, very clear that the pathway leading us to 1.5 degrees is that which is with a 50% probability. So there is an equal probability that we will not be able to be on the pathway. But the conditions that get us there are that emissions have to peak by 2020 at the latest. And then after that, there have to be significant cuts, anywhere between 15 and 17 gigatons per year, which is nearly a third again, to get us onto that pathway. That is an enormous challenge. Nevertheless, there is a 50% probability that if we follow all the kinds of conditions that we see in place from the INDCs, we could actually see ourselves coming towards that with all the additional efforts that we've laid out in this year's report and last year's report. In this year's report, we actually do have to assume negative emission technologies. We've done it in several years. These are biomass, but also other kinds of technologies which have yet to be uh, scaled up, including carbon sequestration. So they do represent a significant part of the models, and it's something which I believe we need to be much more explicit about as we go forward, elaborating on what the national, nationally determined contributions really do look like. Well, clearly the first objective challenge is to reduce fossil fuel usage. And therefore we have discussed and agreed to look at the coal aspect. And that's a fundamental pillar within the calculation of moving away from fossil fuels to a low carbon economy. On top of that, we're going to look at individual countries and how they're actually building in all kinds of moves and transitions towards low carbon, but also how they see the legislative frameworks moving in that direction. And finally, we will take account of the impacts of short-lived climate pollutants. So even though these are on a shorter time frame, they set the scene for a transformation which mitigation will also need to see put in place. The negotiations that are underway during Marrakesh certainly have an idea in theory about what is required. But what I see is that it's what's happening outside. It's the non-state actors, it's the climate action agenda that will really take this on board. And to underline what, what I'm talking about, if you think about sectors such as buildings, industry, transport, transport alone, if dealt with explicitly, could deliver to just over two gigatons a year in reduction of emissions. The building sector with new regulations could deliver five gigatons and industry another four. So the challenge for us is that we can see the solutions outside the negotiations. Do they make their way into the negotiations? Well, there's not really a place for it explicitly because much of it is not going to be delivered by governments. It's going to be delivered by industry, by citizens, by communities and by others. Nevertheless, governments need to establish the right regulatory and enabling conditions for all of these actions to come together and to be accounted for. And that potentially has not yet been agreed in the current negotiations. Well, I think it's worth remembering that, as we've said, the government is only one player now in the delivery. And many, many processes are already out there in play, whether it's the market mechanisms, the investment in renewable energy, the way in which we're starting to build our supply chains. These have got a momentum that is far beyond actually what a small administrative shift might be. And so I think it's worth keeping in mind that it is one country within the whole of the UNFCCC arrangement. It is one country in which there's an administration and my sort of sense is that already the markets have moved, they have transitioned, and so it would be very difficult to undo the millions of jobs that are already in the renewable energy sector. It would be very difficult to undo the kind of low carbon footprint that is out there because actually it makes good business sense. And so I think it would be a very hard-headed businessman who would say, just because certain other things have been repealed, certain laws have been repealed, that they would actually back away from good business decisions. 
So my sense is that without being too cavalier and without sounding like a Cassandra, we've got a middle ground with the potential outcome of the American elections. But don't forget, we also have some very heavy emitters who have declared their intention to change fundamentally and transform their economies, China being one, but of course the European Union and all of its economies within that.